we want Jesus to just have his way in us today. How many of you can wave your hand and say, Lord, have your way. Yeah. Here I am. Just have your way in me. Yes. Hallelujah to Jesus. Give him a hand wave. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Isn't that what we came here for? It's to honor him in glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
somebody ask God to have his way in this house today? No, I need somebody to lift up your hands and say, God, here I am with my arms outstretched. Fill my cup until it overflows. Can somebody just look up towards glory and say, God, have your way? No, 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 no. No matter what your situation is, no matter what you got to face next week, I need somebody to just look up towards glory and say, have your way. Nah, 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 nah. I'm looking for the real saints. And I'm not talking about the way that it goes like I want it to go. I'm not talking about the way that everything falls in line. The way that says, God, I trust you. And I lift up my hands and surrender and say, whatever you want to do. Have your way. Have your way. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Our scripture for today from the book of Psalm chapter 42 says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When I come and appear before God, my tears have been me day and night. While they continually say unto me, where is thy God? And when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I have gone with the multitude. I, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. With the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance somebody tell God thank you for the word of God Elder D will you come and lead us in prayer praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody just a little talk with Jesus makes everything alright Father, as we come, God, we come to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another opportunity at life. Thank you, God, for giving us another chance, God, just to get it right on this side of heaven. God, we thank you that our bed was not our cooling board. And God, we thank you, God, that our family circle has not been broken. God, we thank you, God, for allowing us the opportunity to come into the house and worship and praise and glorify you. Because all praises belong to you. And God, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and worship. God, this may be our last time. We don't know, God. But God, we just ask that you would just fill this place, God. Saturate this place, God. Allow your Holy Spirit to just go to and from, dear God. Set free, deliver, God. Give peace of mind, God. And healing all over this this sanctuary God God we thank you in advance for what you're gonna do God we thank you for what you have done if you don't do anything else God you have done more to, than enough and God for that alone we say thank you God we ask that you would just touch God each and every person under the sound of my voice whether in this sanctuary or virtually God I ask that you God to grant them the desires of their hearts if is according to your will and God we will step aside and allow your will to be done and God I believe that someone is going to come crying what must I do to be saved because this may be our last time we don't know and so God I thank you for this opportunity to have a talk with you to have a conversation with you God to send our petition to send our gratification to y'all to you God because all glory and praise belong to you God if it had not been for you on our side God I know I make this person I know God I don't know what I would have done and so God for that alone thank you God for sending your son in my stead to die on Calvary's cross God and still rising up God with us on his mind and God for that alone I say thank you God no one could do it could have done it but you and I give you thanks and I give you glory have your way Holy Spirit have your way Holy Spirit 
have your way Holy Spirit in this place and all the people of God say amen Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, we can do a little bit better than that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Because we couldn't be here today without God. Amen. How many of you come to praise God? How many of you come to give God glory? Like it's your last time. Oh, don't fool me now. He is worthy to be praised. At this time, we will have dance ministry to come. Let's give them a hand clap of praise as they come.
depression but poverty had me down. It wasn't just poverty but just the struggle had me down. But I thank God that I made it. Things that I can say it's over. I ain't got it all right together, but there are some things that God has ended and put a period on. And I can say, God, I thank you. Because it's over. When you smile at somebody while we're winding down, when you tell somebody good morning in this house, look at somebody. unto me come let us go into the house of the Lord for those that are able you may be seated in this place and I'll begin to talk because I know y'all won't hear half of what I say anyway but as the Lord brings you down he'll bring us all back together a reminder for all of the parents in the house that the uh, nursery and children's church is open this morning so if you would like to take your children down our leaders are there and in place to receive them for those that are in our virtual church good morning this morning if by chance the Facebook broadcast drops remember that you can always go to YouTube which has a bit more stability to continue watching the service but we pray that the Lord will keep both of them going. Somebody say snacks. While we open our child care, our small groups, as you go out during the week, I have been asking the members to pick up a few snacks for the kids. If you buy a pack of cookies for the house, just buy a pack of cookies and bring it on to the church. Because if you have any experience working with children, then you understand that sometimes a snack can smooth out a whole lot of problems. And we want to make sure that our leaders down there, our teachers who give so graciously of their time, are honored with everything that they need. I would also like to say a special thank you to all of you who reached out to me over the past few weeks while I have been sick. It was a blessing to my soul. Many of you reached out to me every day, checking on me, and I thank you so much for that. That means so much to me, and I am grateful for the love that you have shown. For those of you that are interested in uh, working in ministry, a few reminders about ongoing ministry opportunities. First of all, our media ministry has training every Monday at 6 o'clock p.m., at the same time that our music ministry comes together so those are two opportunities right there one to be trained to work in audio or media and then the other to be a part of our music ministry can somebody just tell god thank you for how beautifully they ministered today amen 
Also, for any of our young ladies that are interested in being a part of the dance ministry, they, met, they practice every Tuesday and Thursday at 6.15 p.m. And all young ladies are welcome to join. You do not have to be a member of the ministry. If you know of a young lady in your family, your community that would benefit from that fellowship and that experience, please bring them um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We are still in the midst of our summer sabbatical from our virtual Bible study. Our e-campus pastor, J.R. Harris, has been putting together some summer playlist items for us to watch at our leisure. So make sure that you go and check the Greater Joy Facebook page and our Greater Joy website to look at those broadcasts when you have an opportunity during our sabbatical. Next Sunday... I'm so excited about next Sunday because next Sunday is our YSS, our Youth Super Sunday. Somebody tell God thank you. Listen, here's, here's what I'm going to do to get all the youth and Elder Tashika, she is my partner in crown. Here's what I'm going to do Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Bring me all the children. If you come back, now you got to get them by three. If you don't pick them up by three, they'll be at the fire station. But next Saturday morning at 9.30, you bring me all the, bring me all the children. We're going to find something for all the children to do. She's going to work with those that want to sing. Sister Glenda needs some more to usher. We need some to greet. We need you to dance for scripture, for prayer, all the things. I'm going to give you from 9.30 to 3. Now, if you've ever been a parent, for somebody give you 9.30 to 3 on a Saturday bring me all the children go pick up your little cousin's children yesterday we did the same thing in Butler and I had my three great nephews God bless my heart I went straight home and laid down but y'all bring me all the children we're going to find something for all the children to do we don't want just the children who we, we know are here ministering all the time. They're going to help us to lead the children who are not as experienced. So next 30 from 930 to 3, bring them here. You got to give them something to eat before they come. And I'm going to feed them lunch. Then we're going to go to the fun part. We're asking the parents to give the kids $5 for the fun part. But if you don't have $5, don't worry about that. Sister Shaniqua, Brother Felton, and I have a plan for the kids that will still be able to enjoy themselves. We'll have something set aside for them. But we're wanting to make sure we engage all of our youth and give them an opportunity to be uh, a part of worship. So we're also next Sunday going to do our honor roll recognition Go to gjreportcards at gmail.com, gjreportcards at gmail.com to sign up for the children so that we can honor them if they have made the honor roll. And then if we have babies or small children that need to be dedicated, we're going to do that next week as well. Call the office and let Miss Sadie know by Thursday the names of the children so that she can prepare the certificates. We are going to have an amazing time next week from our youth. Now, I want you to bring grandmama, granddaddy, aunties, uncles, play cousins, everybody, because we don't want our children up here ministering and nobody witnessing them minister so we're going to um we're, we're going to have a high time uh next sunday beginning the first sunday in august our new members class is going to switch to a four-week curriculum that will be coordinated by our first lady sharon all of those who have not had an opportunity to uh, be, go through the new members curriculum meet me here on the first Sunday in August we'll do it from 9 to 9 45 for one month the new members will go through that class and then they will transition into their regular small group class of choice this is an opportunity to make sure that everyone understands the tenets of the word as well as the culture and philosophy of the ministry but people don't know that if we don't take the time to share with them 
So even if you've been here a long time and said, hey, I've never had an opportunity to go through new members, starting the first Sunday in August, that is your time. Just show up. We'll escort you to the new members class, and you'll be there for four weeks. We'll provide the materials, and it will be an amazing experience. Each ministry will come in during that four-week period to talk about when they meet, to talk about what they do, so that everyone is fully informed so that we can all begin to work together. Come on, say amen. Um, we're also continuing to pray for the best family and the smallest family in their time and when they're in the need of prayer. So please just remember to lift them up throughout this week. And then let's make sure that um, we continue to register for homecoming. I heard Bishop talking about this when he was here. Um, we are no longer charging for registration. And that is because our campus, e-campus pastor has worked to get all of our food covered, food for the community covered. So now all we have to do is if you want a t-shirt for that day, go in and register so that you can order your t-shirt. It does help us to know how many people to plan for. We're going to have a high time. All three of our locations are going to come together and we are going to meet over at the Boone Street Park on that Saturday. Then we'll be here for worship on that Sunday. And our bishop is going to bring the word with us all together. It's going to be fabulous. So we're excited about homecoming 2022. Let's get ready to give today. For those that are in the sanctuary and you want to give, you can drop it in the receptacles as you leave the building today. For those that are giving virtually on our broadcast, they will share the ways to give via Givelify, via Cash App, and via uh, PayPal. All of those opportunities are um, available to us. Let's just make sure that we are consistent and obedient in our giving. Let's just make sure that we are consistent and obedient in our giving. Because the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And it also says that if we would put God first in all things, then everything else will be added to us. Amen. I'm going to pray over our giving today. And then after I do that, our music ministry is going to come and then we'll go into the word of God. God, we bless your name in this place. I come with a special prayer for our givers today. I first pray for those that are struggling with what to give. God, I ask that you give them clarity right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you would give them peace and comfort to know that they can trust you to give. My second prayer today, God, I come praying for those that are consistent and faithful givers, but God, that you are challenging to do more. And God, I ask that you would remind them today of all the miracles that you have worked thus far and give them a glimpse into what you are able to do with their continued obedience. And God, I come praying lastly for the one that has hardened their heart against giving. Lord, I ask that you would just give them the trust. Give them the assurance. God, give them the knowledge to know that your word always comes true and that what you have said you will do you will always do and then lord we ask that you would touch us as the leaders of this ministry that not one dime will be used in a way that is not according to your will and your word god we ask that you would make us good stewards of that which is given so that your kingdom may continue to go forward in a way that represents you here on earth those that agree with you signified in the name of Jesus. Come on and say amen. Our music ministry will come.
somebody lift your voice and say, My hallelujah belongs. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you, Jesus. Yeah. I give you the highest praise of my hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and say, You deserve it. But I came to give him the glory because all of the glory, all the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to Jesus. All of the glory belongs to you. Lift your voice and say, All of the glory belongs. It belongs to Jesus. You deserve. Somebody worship him right there. All of the glory belongs to you, my God. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, come on, worship with the baby. this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and stand for the word of God today, if you don't mind. If you would just turn with me to the book of first, I'm sorry, to the book of Acts 27. 
and I'm going to begin at verse number 41. Acts 27, verse number 41. And it says, but the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The boat stuck fast and would not move and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. Flip over to Acts chapter 28 with me. The next chapter and go to the first verse. Acts 28 and 1 says, Once safely on shore, I found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself to his hand. And when the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped the sea, the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing, nothing unusual happened to him. They changed their minds and said he was a God. Come on and repeat after me. Will y'all please type in virtual church today and say hidden danger. Amen. You may be seated in this house. One of God's greatest gifts is the gift of sight. As I've gotten older and my eyesight has become poorer, I can now fully appreciate the value of sight. Uh, being able to see, uh, even for those of us that can't see as well as we'd like to, allows us to partake in the beauty that is all around us. And sometimes I think we take it for granted. Sometimes I think we fail to acknowledge the marvel of our ability to see. Sight is a gift that many of us rarely think about, much less thank God for. Don't get me wrong, it's easy to do. Uh, we, but we get up in the morning and we can see. We put on our readers, our bifocals, or, or have our LASIK done, and then we can see. Uh, but every now and again, we just got to remember to tell God, thank you for sight, to tell God, thank you, because he gave us a gift just to let us see. See, because it's a blessing to be able to see children laughing and smiling. Uh, it's a miracle to see the sky's radiance as the sun rises. And it's awesome to see the beauty of flowers in full bloom. God, in his grace, allows us to see the splendor of his work every day of our lives. He lets us see the stars in the galaxy. He lets us see the crest of the waves in the ocean. We're blessed to see. We are graciously endowed by what God allows us to observe. He shows us the rainbows and the seas and the fields and the moon. And there are a lot of reasons to say that God is good to us. But one of the reasons is that he lets us see. Can somebody take just a moment to just lift your head and say, God, I thank you for allowing me to see. Now that we have acknowledged the magnificence of the gift of sight and we've told God thank you, I want to shift my argument just a bit because even though we're abundantly blessed with the gift of sight, there are some things that God does not allow us to see. There are some things that God keeps hidden. Let me see if I can make it plain. Uh, he doesn't let us see how he makes the rain to fall. He doesn't let us see the thoughts that we think about each other. 
He doesn't let us see the discipline that he dispenses to our enemies. Some things uh, God doesn't let us see. Sometimes he obscures the light at the end of the, of the tunnel. He keeps it hidden. Sometimes God obstructs our view to his ultimate plan and sometimes he withholds our ability to see danger that's threatening our purpose and our lives. He keeps it hidden. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about hazards. I want to talk about risks. I want to talk about peril. I want to talk about vulnerability that God doesn't allow us to see. I want to talk about hidden danger. See, we know that God is a sovereign covering. We know that God is our keeper. We know that God is our buckler and our shield. But that doesn't change the fact that in this life, there will be danger. Because the word of God in 1 Peter 5 and 8 says that our enemy, the devil, is always prowling about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. There will be danger. Matthew 10 and 16 says that God sends us out like sheep among wolves. There will be danger. And John 16 and 33 says that in this world we will have tribulation. There will be danger. And the reality of this walk with Jesus Christ is that the Almighty won't always reveal every instance of danger to us at the moment that there is a threat. Sometimes there will be danger and the danger will be hidden. But don't be afraid, my brothers and sisters. Don't worry about the danger you can't see because I didn't come to put fear in your hearts. I came to share an education about hidden danger that God gave me for the people. He told me to tell us that there were some things to help us survive the danger that's not immediately revealed. In our story, the Apostle Paul is a prisoner being taken by ship to Rome. Paul warns them that they're going to come up on a storm, but they pay Paul no mind. And after they've been battered at sea for a long time, the Lord tells Paul to tell the people, y'all are not going to die, but the ship is going to be destroyed. And just as Paul says, the ship runs aground and they land on the island of Malta. All 276 men were safe, but they were left on the island with no shelter and no food. But they find kindness from the strangers there and they build a fire to keep them warm. Here's our story. Paul is a true man of God, so he helps out with the work and begins to gather wood for the fire. Uh, but what Paul doesn't know is that as he brings the wood, there is a snake hidden in his pile. Yeah. And when he gets near the fire and the snake feels the heat, the snake jumps out and latches on to Paul's hand. The snake was hidden danger. And I believe there's a lesson for us there. Uh, uh, there's a practical application of the word of God. There's a teaching about hidden danger. Let's, the first thing I want uh, that I was instructed to tell the people today about hidden danger is that hidden danger is not obvious. Yeah. See, we're spiritual beings and, and we have the leading of the Holy Spirit. Most of us are diligent about looking for danger in our lives. We stay on guard. Uh, and as we mature in Christ, we learn how to start to look for the traps of the enemy. Anytime something doesn't smell right and anytime somebody ain't acting right, but we immediately begin to discern whether or not the enemy is at work. But the thing about hidden danger is that hidden danger isn't obvious. Uh, because remember, in chapter 27, he was on a ship that was caught in a storm. The ship runs aground, which could have killed him, but that wasn't the danger. Then he shipwrecked with no shelter and no provision. So we might assume that he was starved to death or freeze to death and that was the threat. But that wasn't the danger. On top of everything, the island has islanders that could have been savages with mayhem in mind. But the Bible says they were kind. Even they were not the danger. 
The storm was obvious. The shipwreck was obvious. The cold was obvious. The hunger was obvious. The islanders was obvious. But the snake was hidden. Ultimately, the greatest threat to Paul was the viper that he carried in his own hands <laughs> that he didn't even see. The hidden danger was tucked in the firewood and Paul never had a clue it was there. It was hidden danger. And it was not I. one of the ways that the enemy is often able to catch us unaware is because he puts out all these bogus threats and we're distracted from his real plan. Yeah, what the enemy does is that he lays out these pseudo hints of danger so that when he really strikes, we are caught unaware. And we must be careful that we aren't so preoccupied with fake attacks that we miss the real danger that the enemy has hidden right under our noses. Will y'all please preach point number one to your neighbor and tell them, don't worry about that. That ain't nothing. <laughs> yeah. Look at somebody on the other side and say, no, 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 don't worry about that. That ain't nothing. Let me see if I can make it live. Instead of paying attention to what our child is looking at in their room, we're worried about what the neighbor across the street is looking at. And that ain't nothing. Instead of worrying about the company shutting all the way down, we're worried about who's talking about us in the break room. And that ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah. Instead of worrying about this systemic gerrymandering and redlining that keeps our people in poverty, we're worried about our second cousin who got one quarter acre of granddaddy's land and that ain't nothing. God told me to tell the people of God today uh, that we're watching the wrong threat. See, because the enemy is crafty, the enemy is cunning, he knows where to make us look, so we're looking the wrong way. But if we're going to begin to detect hidden danger, if we're going to have a clue about hidden danger, then we're going to have to take our attention off the things that cause minimal and temporary damage and focus on the stuff that can take us all the way out. Will somebody preach to your neighbor this morning and tell them you better shift your focus because you got a snake in your wood. Will you preach to somebody on the other side and say, no, 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 you better shift your focus. Yeah, because you got a snake in your wood. Huh? You worried about your Facebook reputation. Huh? You worried about your hair shrinkage. Huh? You worried about your brand name shoes. Huh? When all the while, baby, give me monitors, huh? you got a snake in your wood. Huh? God told me to preach real clear to the people of God today. Huh? He said that gossip ain't going to kill you. Huh? He said that argument ain't ain't going to kill you. He said that demotion ain't going to kill you. But you got a snake in your wood that's hidden and trying to take you out. I need to preach to some real folks today that'll say, why am I worried about a beef from five years ago? Why am I crying about milk that's been spoiled and spilled? Why am I tripping about a friendship that won't never my friend and all the while I got a snake in my wood that's waiting to take me out will somebody lift up your hands and open up your mouth and say that ain't the threat <laughs> look at somebody in the face and say what you're worried about that ain't the threat I need some monitor look at somebody else and say what you're worried about that ain't the threat 
that. God said the enemy's got some poison. God said the enemy's got some venom. God said the enemy's got some toxin with the power to end it all. So I got to get my focus off the obvious and see what I got in my wood. Will somebody lift up your hands and open up your mouth and say, God, show me what I got in my wood. God, show me what's about to take me out. God, show me what the devil won't let me see. God, show me what's in my wood. Is it death in my wood? Is it destruction in my wood? Is it devastation in my wood? Show me what's hidden in my wood. Because hidden danger is not always obvious. Secondly, secondly, hidden danger brings observation. Let's go back and read the story carefully. Verse 4 says, when the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they began to talk among one another about who Paul was. In verse 6 it says, they expected Paul to swell up or suddenly fall dead but after a long time seeing nothing unusual happen they changed their minds when the hidden danger to Paul's life revealed itself it was public uh, they saw the bite and everybody knew about it and as a result everybody started watching <laughs> because if we go back and read chapter 27 see remember Paul had already told him I speak to God he said I got a relationship with God God talks to me and he tells me something he said I got a connection <laughs> to the one true God so when the hidden danger attacked Paul, the observation of Paul began. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to tell us that we must understand that when we declare that we have a relationship with God, when we say that we walk with him, and when we testify that we talk with him, people are going to begin to watch and see how we respond to attacks. I said, when we say we walk with God and we say we talk with God, then people will begin to watch us and see how we respond to attacks. They are especially, Karen, going to watch to see how we respond to sudden bite. Yeah, they want to see how we're going to act when the enemy attaches himself to us. They want to see what we're going to do when the enemy grabs a hold of our family and won't seem to let it go. The world will watch and see what we're going to do if the enemy's bite catches us off guard. But here's where we got to learn to keep our composure like Paul. Because even when danger takes us by surprise we've got to carry ourselves with the confidence of God because we have an assurance that no danger set up against us will be able to prosper can I just preach about Paul today because see I don't read that Paul took off running I didn't read that Paul was screaming and crying. I, I didn't even read that not one time did Paul holler out in pain. The Bible simply says that when Paul got the bite, he shook the snake into the fire and suffered no ill effects. 
And if we go simply based on the word, the only movement that Paul made when hidden danger attacked him was a movement that demonstrated confidence in God. I need y'all to hear me there. The only movement that the Bible says Paul made was one that demonstrated that he believed that God could do what he said. Will y'all please preach point number two to your neighbor? Right here, I need you to tell them how you move shows what you believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at somebody on the other side and say how you move shows what you believe so even though you might have been caught off guard by a hidden attack and even though you had no idea that the enemy was about to bite you even though this last attack on your life was unexpected God said how you move in this season is going to show the world what you believe he said this is not the time for screaming and well and he said this is not the time for you to show out on Facebook he said this is not the time for you to go back and forward and tit for tat God said because how you move in this moment is going to show the world what you believe will you fist bump somebody in this house and say your next move is going to be important yeah, you need to move like you got great faith. You need to move like you walk in authority. You need to move like you got confidence in God. You need to move like you got power in Jesus. You need to move like you believe what you shout about. You need to move like you believe what the word says. Your next move in this season is going to show exactly what you believe and God told me to tell somebody I know you didn't see it coming he told me to tell somebody I know this snake caught you off guard he told me to tell somebody I know you never thought that they would bite you like that he told me to tell you though he said I'm watching you baby and I want to see how you gonna move God said I'm watching your demeanor and I want to see how you gonna move he said I'm watching Watching what you say and I want to see how you go move God said how are you going to move when a snake surprises your marriage he said how are you going to move when a snake tries to tear up your house he said how are you going to move when the enemy tries to take your business how are you going to move when the enemy gives you a bad report from the doctor God said your next move after this next bite is going to show everybody exactly what you believe what are you going to do when poison is all in your system what are you going to do when poison is all on your job what are you going to do when poison is all in your house God said I need to see baby what you're going to do with this attack because hidden danger brings observation hidden danger is not always obvious but God sent me with one more reminder Frida God said what mobilize the danger is the same thing that would neutralize it he said what mobilize the danger is the same thing that will take it out because the Bible said Deacon Pete that the snake came out of the wood because the wood got next to the fire but then Paul shook the snake he 
shook it off in the same fire and the fire killed the snake I need you to know the reason you're in danger was because of what was lurking in the first place it was because of the fire you already built because the snake never would have come out had Paul not built the fire the enemy felt the heat and then he showed himself God said what mobilized the enemy is gonna be the same thing God said the fire that you built is the fire that can take him out the enemy felt the heat he felt the heat from your faith the enemy felt the fire he felt the fire from your testimony the enemy felt the flame from your love of God and that's when he reared up that's when he raised up and started looking around your life the fire that was in you attracted the enemy to you the fire that you started brought the enemy from his hiding place but I need somebody in here to open up your mouth and say same fire I need somebody in here to holler real loud to the enemy and say same fire because the same fire that drew the enemy to you is the same fire that is going to take him out the question is can you move with the same fire because what brought him to you is what you're gonna need to get him off you can you respond with the same fire the prayer you used to pray is the fire that brought him out the worship you used to give is the fire that brought him out the worship you used to have it is the fire that drew him out and God said I'm gonna need you to have that same fire to get the enemy off your life can I get somebody to lift up your hands and bless God in this house that'll say no matter what's the last to my life somebody that says no matter what has hooked on to my life no matter what took a plug out of my life this fire that I have the world didn't get it and the world can't take it away this fire that I have came from my struggles this fire that I have it came from my heartache this fire that I have it came through my valley somebody say same fire same fire same fire and I came to serve notice on the enemy to let everybody know I know they saw what you were going through I know they saw when your relationship broke up I know they saw when your car got repossessed I know they saw when you lost your job but I need to let them know you better stop watching the snake and start watching my fire you better stop watching my situation and start watching my fire because I will use the same fire to get me out I will use the same fire 
to keep me alive will you high five somebody and say same fire to fight for your family come on say same fire to fight for your business now same fire to fight for your children the same fire 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 that I got this morning I had in my quarantine room the same fire that you got this morning you gotta have tomorrow will you lift up your hands and open up your mouth and start some fire in this house fire like grandmama had the same fire that brought you through before the same fire when you gave God your hand open up your mouth and start a fire do your mind to your mind, to your mind, if we get sassy with the enemy, somebody say hallelujah, and the enemy got mad. Somebody say glory, and the enemy got mad. Somebody say thank you, and the enemy got mad. Now talk to the enemy and say, I thought you wanted fire. I thought you liked fire. I thought you were attracted to fire. Come on, say glory. Come on, say hallelujah. Come on, say thank you. Come on, say God, I love you. Enemy, don't be mad. Enemy, don't be mad. Because you said you like the fire. You came out when you saw my fire. So if you want to see it, here it go. God, I bless you in spite of it all. God, I give you glory in spite of it all. There ain't no snake that can stop me from blessing. There ain't no attack that can keep me from lifting him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow. No matter what the enemy has hidden. And no matter how the enemy attempts to take you out. You keep your fire. Because the only reason that the enemy is after you. Is because he felt a little bit of the heat. And he knew that once you got that fire started, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I don't mind if the enemy comes for me because of fire. If he wants fire, I'll give him fire. If he won't smoke, I'll give him smoke. But what I need the enemy to understand is that I'm not going to put my fire out and turn tail and run just because I get one bite. Because the same fire 
I shake him into the same fire. The same prayer I prayed. The same song grandmama sung. The same worship I gave. The same fire. The last thing the enemy wants to do to you is try to set a trap for you with your fire from God. This time, do you hear me, beloved? This time, when he comes out, don't you go off? Don't you trip? Don't you tell everybody? Don't you weep and moan? You sit right there by your fire and put him right back in it. The only thing I can say to you is that you should have never come out. I didn't call you. I didn't ask for you. All I was doing was over here building my fire so I could survive. And you came into my fire and now you will die by my fire. Anything kill you that you have the power to kill y'all not hearing me don't let anything kill your reputation don't let anything kill your marriage don't let anything kill your business don't let anything kill your dream that you have already set up a faith to destroy Can I ask you to talk to your neighbor your last time and tell them you already built what you need? No, 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 no. I need you to say it like you love them because they're doubting if they can fight this thing. They think this last bite is going to take them out. I need you to look at them and say, you already built what you need. It was hidden, but the fire in you will reveal it. And that same fire, you use it to kill it. The doors of the church are open. If there's someone here today, and wants to give your life to Christ. Deacons, will y'all come and stand with me? Our men of God are here waiting for you. If there's one, come on, tell God, thank you. A man of God coming to the men of God. Oh, yes. Is there another in this house? Come on. Because see, you've been building. You've been putting your life back together. But you never know what the enemy's got in your wood. You ought to come. Get your fire strong. <laughs> Is that one? Come on. Don't wait till next time. That attack could be right there. About to jump out. If you're looking for a church home, come. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, come. Attacks are not always obvious. And don't worry if the world saw you go back. They're going to watch you anyway. You need to come. 
somebody's in here that needs to come and you know it and the enemy is just waiting for your fire to get low you need to come today and build it up strong so that when that thing comes after you this week y'all to imagine that in your mind that a snake jumps out and the man of God believes God so much that he simply says <laughs> and continues to sit by the fire so I don't know what the enemy has for me this week but I need him to know I'm not leaving my fire I need him to understand that my fire is strong enough and I believe God enough that I will just move to shake off the attack but I ain't going nowhere my family ain't going nowhere my children ain't going nowhere my business ain't going nowhere my ministry ain't going nowhere I built this fire and God's going to keep me alive right beside it. Are you here? You want to build your fire? Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. I couldn't leave without you, baby. <laughs> I couldn't go without you. Yes, sir. Come on, Minister D. Love on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Come on, death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, seated in majesty. so excited about the fire that y'all started today <laughs> God we bless your name in this house we give you glory for all that you have allowed us to see but even understanding God that every danger is not revealed to us but God we ask now that you would begin to build in us a fire that will sustain us through every bite through every infection through every poison build a fire within your people God that will keep us when the enemy attacks us and catches us off guard God we ask that you would build a strength within us that will keep us God in the time that we have suffered an attack that we never saw coming Bless your people. Keep your people. As we go throughout this week, no matter what's been planned, no matter the plot, the plan, or the scheme, keep us, protect us, and God, build a flame within us that does not go out. Lord, we love you today and we can't make it without you we know God that you have provided everything that we need 
and God we give you glory in this house those that agree would you signify it in the name of Jesus come on and say amen as I move to the back to greet the people as we go will you please look at somebody while you're dismissed today and tell them don't worry about that that's the wrong threat we may be dismissed from this house